<laughs> Hello, One Church family. We're here to discuss the word we heard. I think this is a great, uh, a great lesson, a great sermon. Agree. Um, if you're watching this, you should definitely go check it out. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't know if it was okay. One Church at Harvest Point, we are so excited to be here with you today. Today we're discussing the word we heard where we're taking old sermons that Pastor Scott has preached and other pastors here and really dissecting what we got out of it and what the scriptures are saying to us. And so I'm excited. My name is Quentin R. Giles. I'm Amenze Wansia and we're going to be looking at the Looking for My Neighbor series. So let's get into it. Yeah. So it starts off at Luke chapter 10 at verse 25 and it says and behold a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him say master what shall I do to inherit eternal life verse 26 he said unto him what is written in the law how readest thou and he answered he said thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself and he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do and thou shalt live. Then it goes on to tell the story about the man on his way and the thieves just totally robbing him. Mm -hmm. He's down bad, basically. Real bad. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. So it goes on to me, to me what this means is just you have to love others as you love yourself and as you love God. Because yeah. there's no way you can say you love God. And you could just basically pass your neighbor like the priest and Levi did. Mm -hmm. Just pass them along. You don't regard their feelings. I feel, you know, to claim that you're a believer in Christ, you have to have that heart. Yeah. You know, definitely as I got more into the word, I definitely had to work on, you know, just be totally compassionate, even to your enemies. That was one thing. Woo. What do you think about being compassionate to your enemies? Oh, oh, you're going to put me on the spot. Uh <laughs> <laughs> You know, that is something that I have had to uh, really, really work on. That is that is not a natural reaction to me, because if you come to me, I'm ready to go to war. That's just my natural posture. Um, and so it, it, it's been a work in progress. I'll say, you know, if I can, and I hope I don't get in trouble for this. I've told this story before, but like I realized how difficult it was to pray for an enemy uh, when there was the murder of George Floyd. And then we had civil unrest, right? And in the civil unrest and in the protest, uh, there was destruction happening around us everywhere. And for days, I remember seething and like, really, if I'm gonna be real, having it in my heart to like, burn it down. Like I wasn't gonna do it, but like, y'all, tear it down, tear it down. And you know, we also had a particular president at that time and, um, all the things that are associated with that, like every, every negative thought and emotion and feeling that you could think, that's what I had. Um, and I think the Lord just convicted me about day three, because when I say I walked around that house with rage in my heart, it was rage in my heart. And uh, I had to get on bended knee. I was praying one day and then you ever be praying and like somehow your prayer get hijacked and then you be praying stuff that you didn't. And so I'm like, okay, the, the Holy Spirit clearly like, grabbed me you know that's that's the best way I can put it and I had to repent because I realized what I was doing and the anger and the hatred that I was festering on and then I had to pray for the people and I had to pray for the then president which was hard for me because in my mind at the time at least prayers were about good things and you know not really the difficult situations. and so I think that that was a part of the Lord um, trying to mature me in the faith and understand that prayer is not just to ask God for good things and not just for me to receive good things or the ones that I love to receive so that that was that was that was difficult but it was a learning lesson and something that I try to implement now um, and as far as the sermon goes I, I really appreciated well I was I was a little taken back because I thought like we were going to spend all of the sermon about like you know looking for those people that are our neighbors to help them and really it got flipped on his head and was like well yes sure but who are you right because the lawyer that we're talking about in the scriptures like was trying to be justified and so even the word trying to be justified and asking Jesus this question suggests that he didn't have pure intentions in asking these things, right? Or asking how he would obtain, you know, heaven. And so really the sermon flipped it to be like, well, what are you? Or, yeah, it's cool to know the word. We should know the word. It's cool 
to hold people accountable, especially if they're going to preach the word that they're truthful. But then are you actually even applying the word? Why are you so busy looking for your neighbor? Are you living it out yourself? And so I thought, I mean, it was convicting. And I thought it was just a really, really good way of like refocusing us to keep the main thing the main thing. Yes, and I definitely agree because oftentimes, you know, as a believer, it can be hard to show, be totally confident with being able to help people, even strangers, sure. your enemies. Often you can go to church every Sunday, read the Bible, read the verses, but you have to apply it yeah. to your life. And it was someone, you know, you would at least suspect in the passage to actually help that man, to take him in, sure. be able to pay for the the end yes. and, and, and come back and be like <laughs> whatever he's spearing yeah, I got it I got it I, got I don't it. know if I'm there but I you know cool we it's in the scripture it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's something I feel Jesus definitely emphasizes you have to have that heart you have to be willing yeah. to give you have to be willing to give and just to love others as you love yourself and love God yeah. so I really love how Jesus always emphasizes that if you love me if you're trying to obtain this or obtain that, I'm going to need you to do this. Mm -hmm. Can you do this? Can you obey me? Mm -hmm. Can you love your neighbor? Can you help others even when you don't know them? Yeah. Even yeah. when you might not even be in the best condition because we don't even know the man that actually helped the man that got robbed, what was actually going on when he was on his way to now, that's walking. Facts. We don't know. He man could have been big busy. Yeah, he could have yeah. just gotten in an argument. We, Mm -hmm. He could have been going through a lot, but he was like, I'm going to help this man. He yeah. had that heart. He had compassion. So I feel it's definitely, definitely a, to me about you need to be able to have that compassion. Mm -hmm. If you love God, you have to love others yeah. no matter what. Yeah, I think. Circumstances. Yeah. And it can be hard. <laughs> it is. That's why we pray. Yeah, that, that's 100% why we pray. So, um I think it's motivating, like for us to to reassess and reflect, you know, where we are, um, and even if we're not displaying those attributes. Right. Um, also, I think in the sermon too. Now that I'm thinking about it, you know, Pastor talked about using wisdom as well, right? Not necessarily going and emptying out the bank yeah, account to help someone. Careful. Correct, correct, correct. <laughs> but that if we find ourselves being kind of hard-hearted. Um, just towards people in need, we really need to reflect on ourselves. What are we doing? Because we are the ones that say we believe, but are we actually acting like we believe by living out the scripture? So I think it's a good word. Yes, I definitely agree. Yeah. Help, but use discernment, use yeah. prayer, and be compassionate. Yeah. Love your neighbor as you love yourself and God. Yeah. Amen. 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 <laughs> And boom, that's it. Be encouraged. Be ye encouraged. 